Hello, everybody, and welcome to the RB Web reporter side of the training. On this webinar, we're actually going to go through the web portion of how to utilize and access the reporter side of the RB Web. To begin with, you first need to create a user ID and password for your reporter to be able to log in. So in the RB8, go to Setup Resources and pull up the resources name. Double click into their name and then it's going to pull up this window. In the additional tab, you're going to see where it says web account name and web password. Enter their account name and their password. Now when you enter their password, their password is going to be an asterisk and it's going to be hidden from you. So after you guys create their user ID and password, internally you guys will never know what their password is again. Now if they forget their password or they lost it or anything like that, you can always come in here and you can just manually change the password and give that new password to them. So after you create the user ID and password, go ahead and save and close, then you can pull up your web page. Once you pull up the web page, you're going to go to your site, then go ahead and enter their user ID and password and go ahead and log in. First thing that you're going to see is a My News web page. This field right here that you see is an editable field, and it is editable within the RB8 program. Now, to edit this field, in the RB8, you would go to Tools, Web, and then Site Configuration. In the Tools website configuration, this is where you go to control the RB Web for your clients and your reporters and just the appearance of it. So the tab you want to go to is the News tab. So if you look at the top and the bottom, the top says Client News, the bottom says Resource News. Currently, you are going to be looking at the bottom portion only because that is what we're covering is the reporter side. So in here, you can actually create and add any text you would like for your reporters to be aware of. If you guys have new marketing tools or if you guys are offering something, go ahead and enter that information in here. Now, you can also use HTML coding to make it bold or bigger or anything like that. This first line says, accomplish whatever you need to do quickly. With RB Web, you can acknowledge job notices, turn in completed jobs, and find everything you need from our office whenever you need it without waiting. So if you go onto the web page, that's the first thing that you see. Accomplish whatever you need to do quickly. With RB Web, you can acknowledge job notices, turn in completed jobs, and find everything you need from our offices whenever you need it without waiting. So anything you change in the RB8, the new section will appear here on the reporter side. If we take a look on the left, you're going to see where it says My Profile. If they click on that, they can actually view their personal profile within the RB8. So as you can see, salutation is Mr. We need to change that to Miss because it's Miss Lisa Welch. Okay, this is her address, city, state, it's her phone number, alternate phone number, and her mobile phone number as well. At the bottom is where they would enter their email address. This email address is incorrect, so I'm going to go ahead and fix it. Now, whatever the resource does on this end, whatever they change, it will go in retrospect and change within the RB8 as well. Once they hit save, the information gets changed on the RB web and within the program. You can also allow your reporters to change their user ID and password once you've created that user ID and password for them. In order for them to be able to change it, they just come into the change ID on the left side, and they would just enter a brand new ID. Then they would go to the change password on the left, enter their current password, and then they can enter a new password that they would like to change it to. The next thing we want to go through is the first tab, which is available, which is the calendar tab. If you go into the calendar tab, if you use a drop down on the left side in the search criteria, you actually have two types. You can see the calendar, which is a month at a glance, or you can see it in the list view. Currently, this resource doesn't have enough tied to her because she's a pretty old one. So I'm going to go back all the way to 2006. It'll tell you a little minor detail information about the job, who the ordering attorney is, the job number, the job date, start time and end time, when it was scheduled, who it was ordered by, the current status of the job, and the caption, which is the case. And if you take a look at the top right section, it's going to tell you how many jobs that they scheduled out of those, how many were rescheduled, and how many were canceled. Now, if you click within the job, you can actually see the detailed information of the job. Now, if for whatever reason the resource wants a copy for themselves and they would like to print it out, they can click on View PDF Version at the top right. If they click on the View PDF Version, it's going to open up a little PDF of the worksheet. Now, the resource, if they'd like to print it, click on the Print button. If they want to save it to their workstation, click on the little disk to save it. Then close out of that. 
The other view is the calendar view. So if we take a look in the calendar view, it's going to list it a month at a time. If you take a look at the top, you have a double arrow and a single arrow. The double arrow is for you to skip through it by the year, so you can go back from 2005, 2006. The single arrow is from, for you to go from month to month. In the calendar view, you're going to see a month at a glance, and it's going to show you on those days if there was a job for this reporter. So if they're assigned to any job for this particular month, it's going to show that job. If they hover over it, it's going to give them the minor detail information. If they actually click on the job, it will give them a more detailed information about the job. The next tab that we're going to take a look at is going to be the turn-in. Once they click on the turn-in, the resource, automatically it's going to pull up every single job that has not been turned in. If you guys are going to allow your resources to do the turn-in portion, they actually have two different modes of doing the turn-in. There's the wizard mode and there's the advanced mode. I'll cover both modes with you. So taking a look at the wizard mode, if I go into my job 12274, the first thing that it opens up is step one and five for the job. It's going to ask you if this information is correct, the case name, the case number. If it's going to be a rush, just use a drop down and select it as a yes. If it's not, you can keep it as a no. If you have any additional information that you need to write regarding this job, not about the deponent, but about the job, enter that in here. Once you've done that, you click next, then it's going to take you to step two of five. In step two of five is where you actually add the deponent. So you'd add the deponent, write them how many pages they're transcribing. Then if you have any notes for this particular deponent, you can enter it in here. And if you have any files that you need to tie to this deponent, you can actually upload the files in here. Just click on Browse, uh, select the destination of your file. Choose what type of file it may be. I'm just going to say this is an exhibit. Then you would hit Next. Once you hit Next, at the bottom it's going to show you the status bar of the file uploading. And then it's going to complete and go back to step two while showing the deponent that you just created. If you need to add another deponent or a witness, down below it's going to say to add another witness, click here. So if you need to add another one, click here. Then it's going to take you back for you to create and add another deponent. If at that point, after you create it, you do not have any more to add, you can just click on Next and it will forward you to the next step. So then it will take you to step three of five for you to add all the ordering clients. If you are using prefill and you're allowing your reporters to do the prefill, then once you come to this step, it's going to show you all the clients in the parties tab of the job. At that point, they will just select who is going to be ordering by checking the box. And if they are going to be ordering the original, then have them check the box original as well. Then they would just click Next. Once they click Next, it's going to take them back to step three, show them who the ordering client is. At this point, if they need to add an additional ordering client, they can click here where it says to add another party, click here. Then from here, you would have to click on the binoculars to look up who that ordering client might be. Pull up the firm. Hit search, go into the firm, and then you would use the drop down and select who the ordering client is. If they're going to be same as the sold to client, go and check this box. If the bill is going to say like a third party insurance company or anything like that, do not check this box and look up that particular company. Once you're finished, you would hit next. I'm actually going to save. Check this. Hit next then it's going to show you that you just added another party, Mr. Don. 